This is me, Hema Zafar. I am from Pakistan, US Alumni Network, Jamshoro chapter. So, uh, uh, I have been here to discuss, tell you about Hubert Humphrey Scholarship Program. Uh, I have recently, I have been nominated by US Embassy to promote different US exchange programs and today we will be discussing about Hubert Humphrey Fellowship. We have our guest speaker, Dr. Habibullah Pathan Sahab. Sir, first of all, I would like to welcome you. Thank you so much. So, uh, sir, uh, so let me introduce Dr. Sahab first. Uh, Dr. Habibullah Pathan is Director and Associate Professor at Mehran University of Engineering and Technology, Jamshur. So let's begin our session. Uh, sir, what is Hubert Humphrey Fellowship? Uh, first of all, Dima, thank you so much for interviewing, uh, interviewing me uh, on Humphrey Fellowship opportunities uh, for Pakistani because uh, I get a lot of queries from different aspiring candidates, uh, individual messages. So I think that's a wonderful opportunity for all aspirants to listen to the program and complete the application because the deadline is really very close. So Hubert at Trumpet program is uh, one of the, uh, the Fulbright exchange uh, activity by the U U.S. government uh, funded by uh, the United States of America and one of uh, the distinguished programs among all uh, prog uh, programs offered by the United States government. Uh, it's a professional development activity, a non-degree program for uh, professionals having more than five years of uh, practical experience in, in kind of Working environment and people who actually want want to be uh, a leader in the different fields. So, what is the program about? That they provide an opportunity to learn uh, from the biggest uh, organization based on the United States. So, there are different components that I'll talk about. It, but the basic purpose model of uh, this particular program is to create leaders uh, who are not only national leaders but the global leaders in the different. Uh, uh, fields. So, who can apply in this program? What is the eligibility criteria? Alright, so uh, I'll just go back uh, quickly talk about uh, history, uh, when it is starting and uh, quickly talk about the eligibility criteria of applying for the new Act Champion program. So, the program technically started back in 1979 by the US President Jimmy Carter in recognition of uh, uh, the Vice President of the United States, uh, Hubert H. Humphrey. And you'll be surprised there are more than 200 uh, Hubert H. Humphrey uh, fellows uh, since the 1980s. And if you uh, know the numbers, there are more than uh, 5,720 fellows across uh, the, uh, the world and more than 162 countries participated in the program so far. Uh, and more than 47 universities uh, in the United States that participated or are participating or hosting different Humphrey Fellows from across uh, the world. Uh, this year, there are more than 97 countries participating. It was 1980 and 19, and there are more than 160 fellows from different corners of the world. Pakistan uh, is one of uh, the countries where the biggest uh, Hubert H. Humphrey Fellowship awarded to uh, the different professionals. So, for example, the minimum number uh, of uh, participants is 15 each year. But this year, uh, I read somewhere, uh, and people are ready to go, they're nine, although the funding is shrinking, but I'm sure a couple of, in a couple of years it will increase. So, can you tell how many people uh, yearly apply in this program and how many get selected? All right, so uh, the turnout rate is uh, quite high, for example, I heard uh, more than uh, 13 1400 people apply from Pakistan and let me tell you this is not uh, the national program only that's only the first step that's a global program and people are selected in the final round in the United States Washington DC where there's a commission that selects people uh, not based on the, uh, the country but based uh, on, uh, on the different areas of the world so uh, let me quickly go back to your first question about the eligibility criteria. So, if you have a college or university degree, okay, the first criteria of applying is that you have a 
universal degree. In Pakistan, uh, probably they uh, prefer the master's uh, degree, so it's like 16 years of education. And uh, the minimum for the five years full-time working experience. But let me tell you for uh, the people who are working in the university, if they're interested to apply, they should have some administrative role. So a, a teacher working in the university uh, probably cannot apply if he doesn't or she doesn't have administrative experience. So administrative experience is the I mean, standard account. And uh, uh, you must demonstrate leadership skills uh, because there'll be a lot of questions where they will assess your leadership skills in the country. How have you performed some uh, leadership role or how have you solved some kind of issues facing the country or some international issues. And then uh, one of the other requirements uh, is about the public service. Have you involved yourself in some kind of community work or have you done any kind of public service? That's also one of uh, uh, the deciding factor. Uh, if you can really prove it in your application, probably your chances of getting selected are higher. The other requirement is English language requirement. Uh, probably at this stage, uh, you do not need a standardized test called uh, TOEFL. But once you're shortlisted, you're asked to take uh, TOEFL I meeting, and the minimum score that you should do is 71. Uh, if you get less than that, probably they send you for a language course before uh, the main program, which is in August. Uh, a lot of people go in July and August to take uh, the pre academic language course. Okay. So, sir, can you please tell me that what are the major components of this program? All right, so uh, if you're asking about uh, different fields, so uh, uh, um, okay, and components, I'll, I'll definitely talk about the major components of this program. But let me quickly talk about uh, the fields of uh, people who uh, wish to apply in that. So the first uh, area is about the sustainable development. So if you say what is sustainable development, so we've got a couple of fields in it. So for example, it's agriculture and rural development. So for example, uh, you can talk about agriculture research, extension management, ag agriculture marketing, value chain management, or post harvest technology, or food safety kind of issues. And then under the same heading, sustainable development, we have economic development, which is again one of the very uh, up sample issues. So you can work on sustainable development of uh, microfinancing, green financing, public or private sector uh, appropriate to apply. And then the other field is uh, banking and finance. Uh, and fellows come from different uh, corners of the world to really study different models of finance. Uh, instead of expanding uh, a corporate entity market share, and then you have the natural resource environment policy and climate change, and uh, you would agree this is one of the uh, really uh, hard issues that uh, yeah, people are really researching on climate change and the green financing, uh, environmental policy. The other field of the same uh, heading is uh, urban and regional planning. So, uh, yeah, I mean, under that, probably you know what is public and social policy about uh, urban development policy and economic development policy, regional and economic policy for that. Then we have the other uh, major heading called uh, democratic institution development. Under that, we have uh, uh, fields like communi uh, communication and journalism, and law and human rights, and public policy analysis and public administration. And then we have trafficking and personal policy, prevention, technology and management, human resource management. And then the other uh, area, the major area, education, uh, which is again very central for development of any country uh, and we have fields called educational administration policy planning uh, higher education administration and I, I was lucky to go under higher education administration uh, study at Boston University and the third most important field uh, field called teaching English to this uh, as a foreign language so how to give um, training to the teachers to develop some kind of curriculum and teacher training. Uh, the third major area, the, the two I just talked about, third major area is about public health. So people are involved in public health or public health policy management. And so some doctors can yeah, apply in public can apply, health. Can apply, the medical personnel can apply. So under that we have 
HIV-AIDS policy and prevention, substance abuse education and treatment and prevention. So these are some of the fields. So there are more than 18 fields and people from different backgrounds, they apply to get some uh, experience. So uh, what difference did you find in the research of Pakistan and when you were there in the U.S.? All right. Uh, there's a huge difference because I must say that the U.S. is a leading uh, country for high-tech research. Uh, in the world. I've studied in the, in the United Kingdom as well. Uh, what is best about the United States is that uh, technologically it's, it's a very, very advanced country. And you would see in the ranking of QS ranking or the world ranking, uh, mostly first 10 universities are based in the United States. Uh, there are many reasons why the U.S. government is uh, funding uh, research programs and they are really revising their curriculum. They are really uh, putting a lot of money in science and technology. Uh, basically, that's uh, it's really best for people in STEM, in science, technology, engineering, and management to go there and do kind of research uh, because we've got uh, professors who are really world class and research with huge funding available. Uh, and they've got a bigger balanced approach of uh, the coursework and research work, which you don't find normally in other countries. Uh, uh, so, for example, if you go to for a PhD program for one and a half year, you have to uh, undergo uh, 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 teaching uh, some courses or learning of some courses, and then you do some kind of research. So, there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of funding, a lot of collaboration. So, I think that's uh, one of the excellent opportunities students can get to study. Uh, what success story do you want to share through this fellowship? All right, uh, probably to share mine and uh, other people as well. Yes. Uh, we were 15 fellows, and my individual plan, which is called IPP, uh, when you go there, they teach you to dream. And uh, probably sometimes uh, when you write your individual plan, sometimes you laugh. Is it, is it going to be possible uh, to pursue in the United States? For example, I had a dream to work with the world's leading figure, Professor Noam Chomsky. And I wrote it, and I told uh, to the uh, exam committee here in Pakistan, I'm going to the United States just to work with them. And they really encouraged me to really dream and achieve my dream. So what happened, uh, just went to the United States, uh, applied for my postdoctorate opportunity, uh, right to the, and I wrote to President Noam Chomsky, a very positive reply, and I had to be work with uh, my postdoctorate project with Professor Noam Chomsky. So what I say that you've got to really dream and they will really help you achieve that particular dream. We must have certain uh, tactical goals and how to really approach them. They are providing all opportunity to achieve uh, that particular uh, dream. And it's not the only case that other people really who have really achieved the dream. For example, a lot of people who wanted to work with IMF, there are a lot of people who wanted to work with World Bank or leading universities. I really saw uh, them really achieving it. So everybody really achieved uh, partially or fully was really tough. So how this program is basically designed? Like what are like so how the components of yeah. the question was. So uh, as I told you earlier, this is open source program. It's non-degree program. That means you've got the liberty to do whatever you wish to do, right? So so the maximum duration of the program is from ten months to twelve months. It can be extended. It can not be extended technically, but you have to really complete everything by one year because you're already awarded uh, a visa which is for one year. So you need to make sure that you have to complete everything within that time frame. So there are maybe two components. Uh, the first component is your coursework. So when you go there, you do a lot of seminars, a lot of workshops, you attend a lot of programs, you design your own program, uh, enroll in various uh, credit or non-credit courses. Uh, and the second program, and the second part is your professional affiliation, which means uh, for 30 days, uh, minimum time period is 30 days, that you can extend. Uh, you've got to work as a full time employee, you know, in turn of somewhere in the US based organization. So, for example, I work at MIT, uh, but my time period was really longer, that was uh, more than three months. So, that was a postdoc uh, opportunity for me. So, I completed the project as a full time uh, postdoc scholar. Other people work in different organizations. Uh, such as, for example, National Geographic Channel. People are interested in uh, journalism. People are interested in media. Uh, in media, so they work with different channels. CNN. Uh, people work with IMF and World Bank. People are in banking or economics. 
So they were there full time. I was there at a time interested to work uh, in the field of education with World Bank, but when I got an opportunity to work at MIT, probably uh, I didn't think of any other opportunity. So in this program, is there any community ser uh, service necessary, compulsory? Exactly, that's uh, as I told you, even when you apply for this unpaid program, you've got to really show your potential for the community service. You've got um, hundreds of opportunities when you go there to do community work. Where, for example, you go to different organization and charity organization fundraising or probably getting food boxes for, her, for the needy people. So I tell you, it's very important, very important uh, component of River Dutch country to do community work and search opportunity. Uh, the person who has really invested the highest number of hours in the community service will be awarded uh, some cash prize by the United States government. Uh, uh, during the Humphrey Fellowship Program. So 